Thanks for staying with us. Uh, this month focuses on educating communities about sickle cell. Uh, sickle Cell Awareness Month, observed in September, it aims to increase public knowledge about sickle cell disease, a genetic blood disorder that affects millions globally. Uh, it focuses, like I said, on educating communities about sickle cell disease impact, promoting early diagnosis and treatment, and advocating for research and support for those affected. The goal is to reduce stigma, improve healthcare access, and enhance the quality of life for individuals living with sickle cell disease. Our guest this morning is uh, Mr. Okocha Afamefuna, a public health physician in the Lagos University Teaching Hospital. Uh, good morning and welcome to the program, uh, Dr. or Mr. Afamefuna. Good morning. Okay, very good. Now, sickle cell, um, let's, let's know the gravity of this condition we are calling sickle cell because we just say it in passing, it may not mean so much to us. Let's know what uh, they the impact of this can be to the society and how serious it is why we're even talking about it. Okay, thank you very much. I'm so pleased to be here talking about this condition called sickle cell disease. In fact, sickle cell disease is a global public health concern. But the, it is predominantly found in sub-Saharan Africa. And it may suffice you to know that Nigeria is the epicenter of this disease. Now, do you know that every year 300,000 newborn babies are born with sickle cell disease globally? Out of these 300,000 newborns with sickle cell disease, Nigeria has about 100,000 out of these 300,000 globally, just Nigeria alone harbors about 100,000 newborn um, babies with sickle cell disease on annual basis. Now, out of these um, 100,000 newborn babies, do you know that about 50 to 90 percent of these children don't go beyond their fifth birthday? Mm. You understand what I mean? So mm. imagine a situation where you have 100,000 babies born with sickle cell disease, and about 50 to 90 percent of these babies die before their fifth birthday. That is huge. That is huge. Mm. So it is actually ravaging our people. What is sickle cell disease? Sickle cell disease is a genetic disease because there is a lot of social cultural beliefs about the cause of sickle cell disease. And this adds to the stigmatization of our dear patients because of the myths, you know, people have about the cause of sickle cell disease. Some believe it's caused by witches, by wizard, and all of that. But just to focus on the question you asked, that is the burden. In Nigeria, we have like about two to three percent of our population living with sickle cell disease. So if we assume that Nigeria is 200 million people, for instance, then take what two to 3% of that population means. We're talking about millions here. We're talking about like four to 6 million people living with sickle cell disease. That is huge. That is huge. Now, why is it also a problem? You find out that these individuals are frequently being admitted because of the crisis, because of the kind of uh, challenges they go with their health. So you find out that there is frequent hospitalization leading to frequent absenteeism in schools at work. You can imagine leading to repeated classes, um, probably loss of job. Because if you keep telling your boss, today I'm sick, I'm admitted, uh, tomorrow you're sick, you'll be fired. Mm. You understand? Then talk about the stigmatization. I was with some of them yesterday because I happened to be carrying out a research among them. You can imagine the psychosocial issues they are having. Apart from the physical challenges in terms of uh, bone crisis, you know, and other aspects of the symptoms they, they have, the psychological issues are even very, very serious. 
because of how the society treats them. I will stop here so that you yeah, can... Yeah, um, I'm just pointed. concerned. We really don't even have much time, but I'm concerned you mentioned an alarming fact that uh, Nigeria has like uh, one-third of the entire global cases of sickle cell. Sickle cell. Why is that? Yes. Why is that? Is because we have not we have not done what we supposed to do. What do we supposed to do? Public enlightenment, like what we are doing now, is very key. Most of our people don't even know what their genotypes are. Some don't even know what genotype is. So you find the uh, grown-up men and women still getting married without knowing their genotypes. So what happens? They end up having babies living with sickle cell disease. So ignorance is key. Ignorance is key in our environment. You know, so, and also the cultural beliefs. People don't want to know that it's uh, a genetic disease. People feel that uh, it's because someone may have offended the gods, or maybe it's a cause from witches and wizards, or all, maybe oh. the family would have done something evil in the past. It's a biku. So, hello? It's a biku or banje, uh, uh, hey, it's all those things. Uh, yes. So because of this, they trivialize this. Let me shock you that even so-called graduates, we still see so-called graduates getting married without knowing their genotypes. So it is the, the ignorance that is the key factor. And so every year we keep having babies, you know, living with sickle cell disease because people are ignorant about it. People have myths about it and they don't want to do something about it. It's a simple test, screening test that you can just do. And you know your genotype. Uh, but to get married, but um, yes. we've, we've also known cases of people going to hospitals and um, being misdiagnosed. Do you also think it could also be a problem of uh, where these people get tested to find out what their genotype is and it's being mixed up somehow? Uh, or are you saying the whole blame is on the people and the health institutions do not have any blame? No, I'm not trying to say that. That's a factor too. That's a factor too, and that calls for proper training, you know, of our healthcare workers. Truly, the point you mentioned, you know, has been documented, where people were misdiagnosed, and they, they tell you, doctor, when I did my, when I carried out my genotype, I was told that I am AA or something, but how come that I am AS now? I can't imagine. So it's a factor. It's a factor. So what can be done, now that we're creating this awareness, what needs to be done by both the citizens and the government as well? Yes, everybody has a part to play. Let me start with the government. We have policies about sickle cell disease. How functional are these policies? How well funded are sickle cell control programs in Nigeria? my dear, is not optimal. Hmm. So that is one. Secondly, we need to engage communities, community engagement to dispel the myths about sickle cell disease. Hmm. Thirdly, we need to make, you know, carry out massive campaigns, massive campaigns to let people know that there is need for them to know their genotype before getting into marriage. There's also need for training and retraining of the healthcare workers. Training and retraining of healthcare workers. So I'll stop so far if you have further questions. Yeah, yeah you, that's all in the, uh, on the part of government. What, what about the, the people? Especially when we see someone with sickle cell, how do we relate with that person? What are the things that the person may likely need so that we know how to live with them and help them manage their life in such a way that they will live long? I've seen some of them who yes. have gone beyond okay. 50 even. Right. And so they have sickle cell. part of, um, you know, campaigning for proper knowledge of what the condition is. Hmm. If we believe that it's a genetic disease, we will not stigmatize against these individuals. We will give them the support that we can, hmm. both from the family level, from the community level, and from the national level, to be able to uh, contribute 
you know, in terms of living with people who have sickle cell disease. Because if you just know that, some people even think that it's infectious. Do you understand? So they try to even distance themselves from these individuals. But if we have proper knowledge of our citizenry mm. on what the real cause of sickle cell disease is, we can now, you know, give all the support we can okay. from the community level, from the institutional level, all from right. every aspect of our being. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we do hope we'll get to that point. Uh, yesterday I was talking with someone that uh, uh, someone with sickle cell brought a cake uh, for us. And then he said, ah, what am I going to do with a cake that is coming from a sickle cell person? So he believes that it is contagious and all that. We need that education so much. But, but we'd like to yeah. thank you at this Great. point, uh, Dr. Afame Funa, for coming on the show this morning. It's been really enlightening uh, that you have been able to talk to us and show us some things uh, or tell us some things about sickle cell. Thank you so much. We've been talking with uh, Dr. Okocha Afamefuna, a public health physician with the uh, Lagos University Teaching Hospital. We were talking about sickle cell because this is Sickle Cell Awareness Month. How much do you know about sickle cell? If you're an adult or even if you're a child or if you're a parent, make sure you're, that your child or yourself or anybody around you is, uh, knows their they know their genotype so that they can, they can, they can know who to marry as well. Uh, for instance, they say AS, AS cannot marry, SS, SS cannot marry, uh, but AA, AS can marry, AA, even SS can marry uh, because they are not likely to give birth to a sickle cell person. So <clears throat> whatever it is, know uh, your genotype, know the genotype of your partner, and uh, maybe we will reduce it. Uh, one third of the population of sickle cell births in the world should not come from our country, Nigeria. We, we are too educated for that. So do something about it. Government on your part, do your own. And the citizens know that it's not contagious. You can also live with that person and make sure that they have a very good life because of uh, your knowledge about what uh, sickle cell is all about. This is where we'll wrap it up on the show this morning. It was a pleasure being with you. We do hope that you had a wonderful time as well and you learned a lot. Uh, we hope that you will rejoin us tomorrow for the Friday edition of The Breakfast. In the meantime, my name is Nyam Gul Agaji. Stay fit, stay healthy, and stay out of trouble.